<laughs> Hi guys. Hi. <clears throat> we got a good study today. Started a new chapter. Uh, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. You don't know. Yep, see I got it right up here at that corner. See right up here? My little cursor right here. Oh, Ephesians okay. 5, 1 and 2. So <laughs> I got it up there. You doing all right? Sure. Yeah, we're doing good. We had a little bit of snow in Springfield today. But we were supposed to get snow. Did we get snow? And no, <laughs> it didn't do it, huh? We started to, but no, it never panned out. Hopefully, we'll get some uh, next week. We like to see a good snow. It needs the nutrients from it. If it's uh, if it's a good snow, we get nitrogen out into the soil. It really well, helps things out. From what was in the sky the other day. If there was any went, snow here, it was <laughs> That went down filthy. south. Went to Sterling and them down there got it. Margaret got it. And, uh, who else is down there that way? I don't know. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> yep. So, all right. You ready to get this thing started? We'll see what sure. we got. Hello, dear <clears throat> brothers and sisters chosen by the happy God. We have been chosen by our Father. What a truth to pause and think on and to realize our lives are hidden with Christ in God. It's amazing to know God's spirit dwells in us and because God is love, God dwells, or love dwells within us. Yeah, isn't that a neat idea? Neat, neat thing to know? <laughs> Looking at what we find in A.E. Knox commentary, uh, God walks in love. He is love. He is our father. Just as children copy the actions of the parents, so we should reflect his love to all with whom we come in contact. God's glory should be the underlying motive of every act. The sacrifice of Christ has many aspects. The opening chapters of Leviticus deal with these in detail. The sins and trespasses offer, offering seem to be entirely for man's benefit, but the first offering of all but the first offering of all, and the most important, this sending offering called a burnt offering, seems to have been entirely for God. Nothing in it was for man, so with Christ. The questions of human sin and transgressions were secondary in his sacrifice. It was, first of all, his obedience to the will of God, which gave his death its infinite value. His object was to please to please his father. This is a true motive for service acceptable to our God. For a deeper understanding of it, check out John Essex's books, God Dwelling Place. <clears throat> it will be more under, understanding of the importance of the sacrifices found in Leviticus. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot in Leviticus that uh, that's pretty neat to see. I, I never studied it. <clears throat> and it was part of this uh, that we had in here, but it was quite a bit of stuff in Leviticus, so we took it out. But John Essex, in his book, God's Celestial Purpose, that says the passage at the beginning of chapter 5 is really the climax of the exhortations in chapter 4. These two verses, Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, incorporate the highest possible criterion or principles of conduct, namely that we should become imitators of God. Like little children who look up to their fathers. For the Lord, nobody would have looked up to my father when I was young. Right. Like little children who look up to their fathers, for we are truly beloved by him. Let us know that this imitation is not achieved by intensive work, but by simply walking in love. Yeah, love does a lot. It's, yeah. It all ends in love. The example placed before us is Christ. He gives himself up for us, an approach present, and a sacrifice to God for a fragrant odor. <clears throat> a very well done presentation of the importance of the approach present can be found in Clyde's video found on YouTube as Clyde Pil Pilkington, the approach present. Christ's service, oh. Uh, Christ's service does not end on the cross. Even though his work in connection with sin was fully accomplished, on the contrary, his service continues. It is at present being exercised on behalf of the ecclesia, his ecclesia, that's us. In Romans 8, <coughs> excuse me, 
excuse me, 34, which reads, Who is the condemner? Christ Jesus, the one dying, yet rather being roused, who is also at God's right hand, who is pleading for our sakes. He is portrayed as being at God's right hand, pleading for our sakes. Yep. Our response to this should be in line with Romans 12, 1 and 2, where Paul says, I am entreating you then, brethren, by the pities of God, to present your bodies a sacrifice, living, holy, well-pleasing to God, your logical divine service, and not to be configured to this eon, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, for you to be testing what is the will of God, good and well-pleasing and perfect, which is mature. This entry was made before Paul had revealed the celestial nature of our allotment. If that was then our logical divine service, how much rather would, should we be willing to offer it in the light of the late and greater relationship of Ephesians 4 and 5? <clears throat> the greater revelation. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> the later revelations of Ephesians chapters 4 and 5. Thus, this study starts out with become then imitators of God. Become is to come into existence or to come into being. A change of condition. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. The verses right above in chapter 4 was a list of things to be taken away from us. Things to discard. In verse 32 it says, yet become. Yeah, Paul goes on to say what we are to becoming into being imitators of God. To imitate is to attempt the same thing in the same manner. We are beloved children of God, meaning that we are the object of his love. God's love is directed to us through Christ. As the object of God's love, it is important how we then view ourselves, not as worthless and wretched and deeply loved, but, but deeply loved by God. <clears throat> you know, we can run ourselves down, and, and what does it say about who we are in Christ? Yeah. So. We can walk in love because our condition has changed, because we are the object of God's love, and therefore attempting to imitate God in all areas of our life through Christ, who is giving himself up for us. <laughs> we should be walking in love towards God and others as well as ourselves. <clears throat> all right. This, so, what? This is our verse for today. Ephesians 5, 1 through 1 and 2. Become then imitators of God as beloved children. Be walking in love according as Christ also loves you and gives himself up for us, an approach present, and a sacrifice to God for a fragrant odor. Yep. Now the I think of vanilla. Vanilla? Yeah. You or like lilacs. Her. She smells, when she smells vanilla, she smells like a new baby. I think the, uh, the smell, you always said you like the smell of a new baby. Oh. It's kind of reminds you of a vanilla smell or something. Fresh milk. In Ephesians, these uh, start our references off with Ephesians 4. 31 to 32. Let all bitterness and fury and anger and clamor and calumny be taken away from you with all malice. Yet become kind to one another, tenderly compassionate, dealing graciously among yourselves, according as God also in Christ deals graciously with you. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. That he may be given you in accord with the riches of his glory to be made staunch with power through his spirit in the man within. Christ to dwell in your hearts through faith that you, having been rooted and grounded in love, firmly planted and growing, should be strong to grasp together with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. To know the love of Christ as well, which transcends knowledge, that you may be completed for the entire complement <clears throat> of God. Ephesians 4, 1, 2, and 3. I am entreating you then, I, the prisoner in the Lord, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called. With all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing one another in love and endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace. Yep, Ephesians 4, 12 through 16. Toward the adjusting of the saints, for the work of dispensing, for the upbuilding of the body of Christ. And to the end that we should all attain to the unity of the faith and of the realization of the Son of God to a mature man 
to the measure of the statue, stature of the complement of Christ. That we may by no means still be minors, searching hither and thither, and being carried about by every wind of teaching, by human caprice, by craftiness, with a view to the systematizing of the deception. Now being true in love, we should be making all grow into him who is the head, Christ. Out of whom the entire body, being articulated together and united through every simulation of the supply, is in accord with the operation and measure of each one's part, is making for the growth of the body, for the upbuilding of itself in love. Romans 14, 16 through 6, verse 16 and 17. Let not then your good be calumniating, cal, calumniated, which means blasphemed. Yeah. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in Holy Spirit. Yeah. 1 Corinthians sixteen fourteen says, Let all your actions occur in love. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Put it on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, pitiful compassions, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bearing with one another and dealing graciously among yourselves. If anyone should have had a complaint against any, according as the Lord also deals graciously with you, thus also you. Now, over <clears throat> all these put on love, which is the tie of maturity, and let the peace of of Christ be arbitrating in your hearts for which you were called also in one body and become thankful. Thankful. Yeah. First Thessalonians four verse nine says, Now concerning brotherly fondness, we have no need to be writing to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to be loving one another. <laughs> First Timothy four twelve. Let no one be despising your youth but become a model for the believers in word, in behavior, in love, in faith, in purity. Yeah, Ephesians 5, 24 and 25. 27. Ne or 27. Nevertheless, as the ecclesia is subject to Christ, thus are the wives also to their husbands in everything. Husbands, be loving your wives according as Christ also loves the ecclesia and gives himself up for its sake. That he should be hallowing it. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it went too far. Hallowing it, cleansing it in the bath of the water with his de uh, declaration. That he should be presenting to himself a glorious ecclesia, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and flawless. Yeah, that's something. You know, you see that where it says. Uh, the, the ecclesia is subject to Christ. Thus, the wives are also to their husbands and everything. Uh, husbands, be loving your wives according as Christ loves the ecclesia. Uh, you know, we're not, men are not, we're not beat down by Christ. We're not. Uh, You're not uh, submissive. We're not second citizens, you know. We're not, we're equal. Husbands and wives are, and when the, when the husband treats his wife with respect, and admiration, she will in turn treat him like a king. It's amazing how that works. We can't belittle a woman because, man, they're God's gift to us. And I, I sure appreciate Marcia. Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> no, he's not. For the love of Christ is constraining us, holding us together, judging this, that if one died for the sake of all, Consequently, all died. And he died for the sake of all that those who are living should know, should by no means still be living to themselves, but to the one, dying and being roused for their sakes. Yeah, Galatians 1, 4, who gives himself up for our sins, so that he might extricate us out of this present wicked, wicked eon, according to the will of our God and Father. Galatians 2, 20. With Christ have I been crucified, yet I am living no longer, but I am living in me, but living in me is Christ, knowing that which I am now living in flesh, I am living in faith that is of the Son of yep. God, who loves me and gives himself up to me, up for me. Isn't Excuse that me. Something? Second Corinthians eight and nine, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that being rich because of you. He became poor, and by his poverty, we should be rich. 
Titus 2, 11, <clears throat> 14. For the saving grace of God made its advent to all humanity, training us that, disowning irreverence and worldly desires, we should be living sanely and justly and devoutly in the current eon. Anticipating that happy expectation, even the advent of the glory of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives himself for us that he should be redeeming us from all lawlessness and be cleansing for himself a people to be about him, zealous for ideal acts. You know, that's neat when we're doing it. We're zealous for ideal acts to do good because of who's in us, because of who we are. You know, we know who we are in Christ and, and we're, we're brothers. He's our big brother. And we're, we're zealous for ideal acts because we know, because we know that. Romans 8, 1 through 4. Nothing, consequently, is now condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Not according to flesh are they walking, but according to the Spirit. For the Spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus frees you from the law of sin and death. <laughs> For what was impossible to the law, in which it was infirmed through the flesh, did God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sin's flesh, and concerning sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the just requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who are not walking in accord with flesh, but accord with spirit. Yeah. The, the bar translation says, reads like this in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Hence, become imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, so as also Christ loves you and gave himself up for us as a sacrifice and offering to God for an odor well-smelling. <laughs> so that was references to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. You want me to read that? Yeah, this is a, what came in after. Oh, okay. Now may the God of peace himself be hallowing you holy, and may your unimparted, unimpaired spirit and soul and body be kept blameless in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who is calling you, who will be doing it also isn't that neat <laughs> he called you and he's gonna he's gonna it's doing it also first thessalonians 5 23 and 24 that's where you find that we love you all grace to you and peace from god our father and our lord jesus christ there's our study isn't that awesome man that come together pretty good so yeah. anyway that's not it's uh almost by 5 20 here our time we're getting this done before 5 30. <laughs> yeah so anyway anything you want to add or say no. to this today all right no think so well time to go see what I'm god's happy. got for the rest of the day yep tomorrow's ma uh, marsh's mama's birthday should be 80. uh six four six i was thinking four my mom's 86. 86 also. So. Anyway, we'll get this thing put up. Oh, and look uh, what Mikey got in the mail today. <laughs> I got a book. God's Celestial Purpose. Man, that's a neat one. Um, Alicia's been putting a lot of that in these. And I've got one of them somewhere and I couldn't find it. I've loaned it out. And he's... It's neat. Gabber gabbered about it the whole time. <laughs> yep, I'll get my highlighter out and we'll get in the middle of it. That's what we do. And Lisa's brought out another one in here. Uh, what was that other than God's dwelling place? John Essex. Uh, God's dwelling place. So I want to get an eye out for that. That'll be pretty neat too. But Anyway, it's time to get this thing up and get it out. So we love you guys and we'll talk to you all tomorrow. Yep. See you then. Love you. Bye.